If you're interested in learning more about the FIX35, then stay tuned, this video is for you. A few days ago, I released a video on the FIX50, and since doing so, I've received a lot of questions and comments. Many of you wanted to know if I would demo the FIX35, and that's what I'm gonna do for you today. Now, I want to level set. It is bright and sunny outside. It's getting kind of late in the day. I had a lot of things going on today, and I've taken some refuge back in this heavily wooded area to get some shade. Now, I have a lot of water with me, and I do have some plans to really go out and put this lens through the test. The game plan is this. I'm gonna start off by giving you some of the benefits of this lens. And then I'm gonna jump into some of the differences between this lens and the fixed 50. I'm gonna do just a few demos on that and I'm gonna talk you through what I see those differences to be. When I'm done with that, I'm gonna jump out, I'm gonna go out into this wide world of where I live anyway, and I'm gonna put this lens to the test. I'm gonna take all kinds of shots like I did with the FIX50. I suspect that we're gonna get similar results here with the primary difference being the focal length, but we'll have some fun going through that. And then to finish it all off, I'm gonna close this video by giving you my final thoughts. I'm gonna let you know how I felt the FIX35 performed and also some of those differences and would I take the 35 over the 50 or the 50 over the 35? So that'll be at the tail end. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some of the benefits that I see with this lens. I'm gonna offer up three benefits to this FIX35. The first one being that it is relatively affordable. This is less expensive compared to the FIX50, and it makes this lens very, very attractive for what it offers. I think this runs around $135, and I'm just kind of guessing on that one. Check the description below. I'll put a link as to where you can get this, but it is less expensive and that is one benefit to this lens. The second benefit is that this lens opens all the way to 1.8, very similar to the FIX50. What's the benefit to 1.8? Well, if you're relatively new to photography, it means that this lens can allow quite a bit of light into the camera. Now, the benefit there is if you're taking shots in relatively low light situations, this is a great lens. And it's also great to tighten up that depth of focus. That means you can get those nice, soft, blurry backgrounds. Now the third benefit is that this lens is relatively compact and lightweight. Now that makes it a good travel lens. You can put it in your bag. I mean, look at this thing, it's relatively small. And that's what I really like about this lens. Now, with that said, I wanna jump into just kind of a quick demo about doing a comparison between this FIX35 and the FIX50. So let's go ahead and jump on that. In order to prevent any movement by myself, so if I'm holding the camera, I may have the scene slightly shifted, or I may go in and out a little bit. I decided to use a tripod. Now, I have the D3400 locked down on this tripod the best I can anyway, and I have the FIX50 attached here first. Now, in front of me, there's nothing really special. I just have some branches and some leaves. This really isn't meant to be an award-winning photo. What I really wanna do is I want you to see some of the differences here from the focal length, and we'll also take a look at the quality of the image itself. So with that said, my camera is dialed in at 1 100th of a second. Um, I'm at an f3.2 and my ISO is 200. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this shot right now and let's see what it looks like. All right, as you can see, it's a shot as I would expect. There's nothing special about it, but I feel that the optics are relatively sharp here and there's no issue with that. So after taking this shot, let's go ahead and jump in and see what it looks like with the FIX35 on it. Let's go ahead and disconnect this lens. And I'm gonna put the FIX35 on right now. All right, and with it on, all I'm doing is lock and focus again, and I'm measuring the exact same. And let's go ahead and take this shot, see what it looks like. Now I think on this shot, the optics are very much the same. The color, the clarity, it all looks the same to me. We just have a greater field of view and that's to be expected on this FIX35. So now that we've done that here, what I wanna do is I wanna jump in and see if I can demo these two lenses on a portrait. And I think that's going to show you just how far away we need to be or not need to be 
when we're taking shots of a subject of some sort. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm with my model here and I have the Fix 50 on the camera body right now. And what I'm gonna do, as opposed to leaving this on a tripod, I want you to see the distance that you need to be um, in order to get a proper shot. Now, I'm gonna try to set this up so that she is framed the same on both the Fix 50 and the 35. Now, I'm not gonna do any sort of post-edit cropping, even though you could do that. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna go ahead and take this shot. Now, I have an ISO of 200. My aperture is at 2.8, so that's we're gonna have a pretty tight uh, depth of field here. And I'm shooting, it's metering about one one hundredth of a second or whatever it's gonna be when I take the shot. As I do with all my shots, keep an eye in the upper left-hand corner and you can see a lot of that metadata. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this shot. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, we got a nice soft background and she is dialed in and in focus and I always try to focus on the eyeball. So with that said, let's go ahead and change out the lenses and let's take another shot and see what it looks like. I've got my Fix 35. I've got it on, ready to take another shot. Let's see what it looks like. And what I want you to see here is the distance that I've got to be to the model to try and maintain that same frame for that same composure. So I'm gonna have to get in a little closer. And this is really kind of a personal preference between you and the model when you're doing portrait work and how comfortable they are. So again, with the 50, I can be a little further back. With this 35, I gotta be a little closer. So let's go ahead and take another shot. As you can see, we have about the same shot here. The frame is set up in the same way. The picture looks very similar. The image is sharp, and I think it's tack focus on her eyeball. Now, one thing to pay attention to, as I mentioned before, though, is how close do you want to be to the subject? That's something that you really need to kind of pay attention to between these two lenses. Now, with taking the shot of the landscape and then doing a portrait shot here with both lenses, I'm going to jump into this demo. And I really am going to put this lens to the test. We're going to have a lot of fun. And as mentioned, I am going to have all that data in the upper left hand corner so you can see just what the aperture is and the shutter speed and where I am with that ISO. And keep in mind, I also include the focal length. It should be fixed at 35, but in the event, I want to put the 50 on there just to show you the difference on some given shot. Keep an eye on that just in case I do. So with that said, let's jump right in and have some fun.
I made it back, and similar to my review on the Fix 50, it's late. Now, I spent a lot of time in downtown Indianapolis, and I had the opportunity to talk and chat with a lot of different people, and I just had a great time, and that's really what this is all about. Now, before I get into my two cents on this lens right here, I have a couple of call-outs. To begin with, I want to thank Robert's camera. Similar to the Fix 50, Robert's loaned me the Fix 35 that I have right here. Now, if you're not familiar with Robert's, it's a true camera shop. And if you're local to the area, they have two locations. One's in downtown Indianapolis, and the other one is in Carmel. So if you're nearby, feel free to stop in or give them a call. I'm sure they'll be happy to help you out. My other call out is to all the people that I met while reviewing this lens right here. I met a lot of great people, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to capture some unique, awesome images. With that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. How do I feel about this lens right here? Well, similar to the Fix 50, I feel that the quality of the images produced are great. I have no trouble with that at all. The obvious difference is the focal length. This is a Fix 35, the other one's the Fix 50. Now, it really kind of depends on your preference and the type of photography you're into. I want to chat just briefly about portraits and landscapes and street photography. So on portraits, I feel a little more comfortable with the Fix 50. The primary reason for this is just how close you have to be to your subject. Can you shoot portraits with the Fix 35 right here? Absolutely. I did it in this video and the resulting images were fine. But it's just the proximity between yourself and the subject. I feel with the Fix 35, you have to get a little closer and I just prefer having a little more distance. Now that's just me. When it comes to landscape photography, you can shoot landscapes with the 50 or you can shoot them with the 35. I actually feel that when shooting landscapes, you want a wider angle. Now, in my opinion, I'd like to be down in the 20 range or perhaps even in the teens. And keeping in mind that when you do landscapes, you're not as concerned about opening that aperture wide unless it's relatively low light and you don't have a tripod. Now, when I do landscape photography, I typically have a tripod and I like to shut my aperture down to maybe an F8 or F11, somewhere in that range. And I don't mind if it, the shutter stays open for a while. So for me, when it comes to landscapes, I'd be tempted just to throw the kit on if that's all I had and get down in that 18 or 20 range. That's just my two cents. So when it comes to street photography, now I really like street photography. I like capturing people in their natural element, really not posing for shots and just catching them off guard, seeing what they're doing. That's what street photography is all about. Now, when I went downtown Indianapolis and I was shooting with the Fix 35 right here, it's a little awkward because you have to get much closer to the subjects. You really can't get that far away and really kind of keep them in their natural uh, situation. So if you look back at some of those images that I took, um, I captured someone with their dog and it was a couple that was laying on the ground and I really felt obligated to go up and talk to them before grabbing that shot. and. I ended up with a decent shot there because they laid back down and that dog had a muzzle on and almost took a chunk out of my leg, which was kind of interesting. Um, but again, you know, all the various photos that I took, I just found it a little more challenging with the 35. Now, one thing to consider here is that if you're on a relatively tight budget, this Fix 35 right here is about 30 to 40% cheaper. Now. I think you can do a lot with this 35, very similar to the 50. You just have to make some subtle adjustments there. Again, if I'm on a tight budget, I might lean towards this 35, but if I have a choice, I'm probably going to lean with the 50. And if money is not that big of a consideration, maybe I would grab both. Now, that's just my two cents. Now, if you're a Canon user, Canon, you might wonder if they make a 35 because it's not talked about that much. Well, they do, and it's an F2. And I'm going to post a link in the description as to where you can get it, right along with the Nikon right here. But one thing to consider with the Canon is that it runs, as of this video, about $550. That's about four times the amount of the Nikon lens. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm guessing it's manufacturing costs, things of that nature. Now, as I mentioned in other videos, I've recently started an Instagram account and a channel, and I've had a lot of fun with it. I've made a lot of different posts out there, and if you're not following me, go ahead and do so. We'll have some fun. I plan to post more images out there and some unique ones, and uh, we'll just have a good time with it. So I hope this video has helped you out, and if it has, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next time, take care of yourself 
and be safe.